10 Steps to Loving Your Life. You know, uh, episode 101 was called Running a Fever 101, as in the basics of running a fever. And I, I think it's kind of appropriate to just every, you know, 100 episodes to have something similar. Not necessarily about the show, but uh, a summary of, you know, the things that we've learned. So uh, the show is about loving your life, and it's about having a healthy, happy, active life right up to the very end. And uh, it's about loving your life enough to live as long as possible and, um, and, and uh, not just have life, uh, not just add years to your life, but add life to your years. So um, that's what we're all about. And so these are 10 steps um, to loving your life. And uh, uh, it's not, uh, you know, I'll explain later on about loving your life and my philosophy about that, but. Uh, I'm going to go through and uh, just a you know, quick update on a couple of things, a fashion report. Uh, this is a nice new t-shirt I have from L.L. Bean, and uh, they are not, um, I don't have an endorsement deal with them. I would love to have one. <laughs> so I'd be well, you know, happy to bring them on as sponsors of the show, even if it's just to provide me an occasional t-shirt. But uh, I've always found that they have uh, very comfortable and uh good looking stuff I think so you know if you're looking for you know workout gear or just any kind of clothing I uh, highly recommend LL Bean so I got a couple of these t-shirts teal is the color for 2020 so that's what I'm going to be getting teal whenever I can get teal so blue is this year and next year is teal um, also welcome to uh, the studio uh, you know the, the reason I'm in the studio uh, for the last couple of episodes uh, is that I am I'm still having trouble with my toe. I did go to the doctor and just medical department update. Um, the doctor thinks that this is a corn on my little toe. It's very tiny, but just really causing me a lot of problems. And um, so I'm being treated for that. I've been treating it for about three days now. I haven't seen much of a difference, um, but as always, I'm going to continue the treatment. And uh, hopefully we'll be back out on the trail and doing all our normal things we do, wearing our weightlifting shoes and all that good stuff the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but for now, I'm in here and um, I'm going to keep talking to you about all the experiences that I have and in, uh, in the research that I'm doing. So let's get into it. Number one, stay active, whatever you do. Now, um, at, you know, all the different Things that every time I look at something that, that is about longevity or good health, mental health, physical health, all kinds of things in your life, uh, exercise always comes up as a positive uh, way to, to address these things. Um, it's 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 good for your metabolism, for um, for your body fat uh, management. It's uh, it's good for you know staving off depression. Um, it's good for just staying active and, you know, uh, keeping your strength up, uh, especially as you get older, you've got to stay active. That's the key to living longer. So, uh, it doesn't mean, um, that you have to go out and, and, uh, you know, run a, uh, you know, run, you know, miles and miles every day. I don't run at all. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to go do heavy weightlifting two hours a day or get on the um, exercise bike or anything like that, just get out and do something, you know, and, uh, try to get some aerobic activity in there, uh, you know, more than once a week, you know, and get your heart rate up a little bit. Um, if you're, if you have heart trouble or something, you probably need to talk to your doctor about that, but there's always going to be some exercise that you can do. Uh, even if it's just walking around or moving your arms around, if you can't walk or moving your head around, if you if you can't move your arms, there's something you can do to stay active and, and uh, keep your circulation going. Uh, all of the good things that come from good exercise. Number two, count calories. Now, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's not that simple. You know, there's metabolism, 
that goes into it. There's a lot of things you can do to trick your metabolism. That's true. It's not just calories in, calories out. Everybody's different. Um, but this is basics, right? It's just a basic thing. And I'll tell you the truth. Counting calories has worked for me. Um, and I haven't been doing it lately. And the result is that my body composition is not where it should be. So I need to get back to doing that. And it's not difficult once you get started. Um, and, and I think probably 150 episodes ago, uh, you probably you know heard me say that I already knew you know basically all the most of the foods that I eat, I already know what the calories are going to be. Um, and I have a list on my fridge. If I forget, I can look it up. And uh, you know, the, the, it gets kind of monotonous. But if you get out of the habit and you stop doing it, you'll find that you, you know your mind may be playing tricks on you. Get it written down and uh, make sure that you're staying uh, above your uh, basic metabolic rate. You know, you can calculate that, and that's not completely accurate, obviously, because people's metabolisms are different. Um, but that's a good place to start uh, to make sure that you uh, don't go extreme, which we'll talk about later. Look at good body composition. Look for good body composition, not a specific weight. Um, everything in your body has weight. <laughs> so when you lose weight, you lose things like muscle uh, that might not be good to lose. Uh, that's always going to happen. Um, when you gain weight, uh, you can gain all fat. Uh, you can also gain weight like I have, you know, in, in uh, between... Uh, you know, since August of 2018, I've been gaining muscle as well. Uh, so my body composition has been changing. Um, uh, even though, you know, I, my weight uh, hasn't been, you know, I, I went down and I went back up in weight. But uh, a, a large chunk of that weight that I gained was muscle. So I can't look at that. I got to look at body fat. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I've, I've been through it. I look at the scale every day and it goes through my head, you know, but I have to just like focus on the body composition. And that's why I hate the uh, BMI because it's all about weight. If you cut off an arm, <laughs> you know, I could improve my BMI by cutting off an arm, you know. So not a good thing to do, obviously. Uh, so look at that body composition and, and you know, it's easy. Uh, you know, BMI is used because it's easy. It's an easy calculation and it correlates to body fat. But what I do is I use that biometrics impedance analysis, which is a fancy name for, you know, you put your feet on a $20 scale and it gives you a number that's your body fat percentage. That's how simple it is. And it's not that accurate, but you do use an average. I use a seven day average and, um, and it all works out. So I can see a trend of which way I'm going. So check out body composition. Also, some people look at how good their clothes fit or how they feel. Those are other good, uh, you know, indicators of, uh, you know, how, how well you're doing on, on your body. Um, <clears throat> uh, be aware of medical problems and address them quickly. This is number four. Um, you know, Problems, you know, step up and, you know, they can, they can really add up over time. And, uh, you know, if you, it might be an indication of something serious. So like when my diet was, uh, you know, 600 calories a day, I wound up um, going to a walk-in clinic and talking about the problems I had. And I said, well, you know, your, your medications are not being metabolized because you don't have enough protein in your diet. You need a certain amount of protein. You also need fat. Uh, you need all of the, the macros in order to dissolve vitamins and nutrients and um, medications. So uh, that can have a serious effect on, you know, not just whether your medications are working, which can affect, you know, things like blood pressure, whatever medical problems that you're treating. Um, but also, you know, she said that that particularly can affect your... Um, uh, one of those organs, one of those weird organs, uh, gallbladder, spleen, or <laughs> something like that, that I don't know much about yet. So I need to add some episodes on those. Um, but, you know, medical professionals know what they're doing, you know. You know, that's why we pay them. That's why they go to school to learn these things. Uh, so use them. 
you know, and there are a lot of things you just don't know that aren't just common sense. And if you're like me, you don't have much common sense anyway. So uh, it helps to get, get in there and, uh, and bounce these problems off somebody uh, and do it quickly. You know, address it quickly as soon as you can. Uh, number five, don't go to extremes. You know, I just talked about um, how I went to extreme on my diet and the problems that I had. Uh, sometimes I do this unconsciously. I just forget and I don't eat as much. And, um, and then I start having the same problems. I'm like, oh, maybe it's because I'm not eating enough. Uh, another uh, area that I've gone into extreme on is uh, exercise. And uh, you know, I know in the beginning I was exercising every single day. I was going out and walking every single day and recording a podcast every single day. And uh, I mean, in particular, episode six, if you go back to episode six, you'll hear my father, who's always been a good common sense moderation guy, tell me, you know, that you don't need to do it every day. And it turned out to be true, you know, and I just kept overdoing it and I hurt my knee and I still kept on going. And I hurt my knee and it was like painting a room the same day and all kinds of stuff that would just, in retrospect, look really stupid. But uh, at the time, I didn't care. I just wanted to keep exercising, you know. But you can take these things to extremes. And, uh, you know, just like dieting right now, this year, I've had trouble. I've, you know, my body fat's not where it's, it's I wanted it to be. And I've wanted to really cut back. But I kept forcing myself. I said, you've got to eat three meals a day. You've got to, you know, keep your um, calorie count up to a certain amount. You know, you've got to do it the hard way, the long way. So, uh, don't go to extremes. You'll uh, thank me later. Number six, habits. Habits are hard to break. Good habits are hard to break, and bad habits are hard to break. Uh, over time, you get to like your habits. And, uh, like, for example, exercise. You know, going out and exercising, getting a routine of exercise. And then when I can't do it, I miss it. I really do miss it, you know. Where it used to be, you know, I wouldn't miss it at all. Oh, I don't want to go out and, you know, walk miles at a time. I just want to sit here and watch a video or something. No, I miss it. And I want to go out there. And that's what happens when you get in the habit. You start doing a good thing, do it again, do it again. Eventually, uh, you'll get to like it. And, you know, the same thing goes with bad habits, too. So, uh, it's really hard to break it. And uh, so... Don't start bad habits and then uh, try to break them and don't get back into them. So form good habits, break bad habits. Habits are hard to break. Um, you can love your life. That's how you love your life, by making good habits and bad habits. And uh, breaking the bad one. <laughs> love your life by making good habits and a healthy life will happen almost unconsciously. Number seven, make your environment encourage your health. Um, keep only healthy foods around all the time. Uh, and I do this, and uh, you know, also it's important that, uh, you know, even though, like, for example, I eat, you know, peanuts, and uh, those are fairly good for me. Um, they have omega-3 fatty acids, uh, protein, and um, probably some fiber as well. Uh, and uh, they're high in calories. So, you know, I keep a little bit of that around. I don't keep tons of it around. It's not something I always have to have. I keep a jar, and when I run out, maybe later I'll get another one, you know. But I keep it high on a shelf where it's a little difficult, a little more difficult to get, and it's behind a cabinet in the pantry where it's uh, not visible all the time. And I keep a bowl of nuts out on the counter all the time. Same thing uh, goes with uh, granola, which is another healthy high calorie uh, food that I use as a snack a lot of times and a lot of times on my cheat day which is supposed to be a cheat meal um, I'll have that for breakfast and uh, you know I use homemade granola uh, so it's healthy it doesn't have any trans fats or any sugar it's just got honey it's got all natural ingredients uh, so it's good for me but it's high in calories and I have to be careful with it so I keep it up in a cabinet where I can't see it all the time, and uh, that helps me to kind of not overdo it on those things. And this is something that Dan uh, Butner went into in the Blue Zones uh, from the very first time that he um, 
the very, very first uh, community that he studied, which I think was in Sweden or somewhere, um, they had built communities, and that's what he tried to do in the United States, is build communities that had healthy environments. They were built so that your environment, you didn't have to, you know, try or go out of your way to, to live a healthy life. It was just part of your environment. So, um, make your environment encourage your health. Um, so, number eight, don't give up. No matter what, don't give up. Don't give up. Get back in the saddle. If you stumble, we're all going to stumble. You know, take the next step. You know what works. You've done it before. You form these habits. And then you stumble. So you just get back up and do it again. The only difference between success and failure is persistence. Just do the next thing and then reestablish your good habits and you Again, you'll be back into the almost unconscious healthy living. Number nine, become an expert in your own health. You know, this is this is something that's evident in every episode of this show. Uh, it's what it's all about. I have been learning about my own health. And the thing is, um, you know, and go back to, you know, the episode uh, Teach a Man to Fish, episode 135. And that was all about you know, why I do things the way I do, why I haven't just developed a program and presented it to you and tried to sell it to you and all these things. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but my philosophy is I want you to become an expert in your own health because that's what's been successful for me. Um, everybody likes different foods. Everybody likes different activities. Some people love to run. Some people like to swim. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that people like to do, and people are all different. So you don't have to just do exactly what I do. Find what works for you. Um, try things, you know, and learn from your experience. That's what I've done. Learn from other people's experience, too. Talk to other people. Listen to other podcasts. Um, read, you know. Uh, learn. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I give you a good start on that from this show and always kind of pr try to provide my sources uh, so you can so you can pick those things up on your own and start to start to learn about what works for you. Um, if it works for somebody else, you know, try it. I try lots of things um, and I think you should try lots of things. I tried edamame and quinoa. Yeah, not bad, but I'm not eating them too much these days. Uh, I tried running. That doesn't work for me. Um, I tried racquetball. I love it. I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I tried a stationary bike. I only do that if I have to. If there's no other way that I can get some exercise, I don't really care for it. Uh, a flexible diet can work, and it works for me if I develop good habits and count my calories. So those are some things that I've tried um, and that have helped me learn about what works for me and what doesn't work. <clears throat> number 10 and this is the summary of the whole thing really love is a verb love is something I do it's, it's not something I just feel uh, life is good because I love my life not the other way around life is good because I love my life not the other way around so I love my life so I can live a happy, healthy, active life right up to the very end. And that's what I want for you. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you've got the fever, uh, you got the fever, keep it. And if you don't have a fever, catch it. And I will talk to you next time on Run